It's time now for Voices of the Region. When we hear from an area journalist about stories making news, this week we talked with author and columnist Aaron Brown in northern Itasca County. So a new year is upon us, and that means a new legislative session in the state of Minnesota with a, a, a reformed, different legislate, legislature than last year. And from the Iron Range in northeastern Minnesota, a lot of new members are going to be in the House and Senate this year, including a lot more Republicans for the Iron Range. In fact, for the first time since, I think, before World War II, a majority of the Range delegation is now Republicans. And that has meant a few things. With a DFL-controlled House and Senate, it means that most of the range de delegation is now, again, in the minority with a different party. And it means that there are there's only one chair of a committee from the Iron Range. David Lislagard, state representative, is the chair of the Property Tax Division uh, Committee, which is an important committee in the state house. But he's the only one because of all those new members and less uh, seniority and clout. Uh, this is a problem that has really hit rural Minnesota big this year because so many of uh, rural Minnesota's districts have now swung to the Republicans. And now when when the DFL holds the majorities, you know, they, they find themselves on the outside. Uh, it's it's a problem uh, that both Republicans and Democrats are, are thinking about. And how, how how do you represent rural Minnesota better in this circumstances? But but we'll see. It could be a very difficult year for some rural issues uh, as a result. the Iron Range Resources Agency, a uh, state agency that, that serves the uh, Iron Range attack and tax relief area. Uh, it has a new commissioner, a new leader. Ida Rukavina is the new commissioner. She was the uh, RAMS, uh, Range uh, Association of Muni Municipalities and Schools director previously, and now she's the IRRB commissioner overseeing an agency that delivers economic development and uh, public uh, work spending. Uh, using taconite taxes. And it's, uh, it's a big role. It's been held by Mark Phillips over the last uh, two terms. Uh, and and um, it's uh, one of those important roles that, uh, you know, is kind of the pivot point for all of this public spending that comes through that the, the taconite taxes, which is a unique local tax that then gets filtered through the state government. So it's the only kind of agency like this in, in the whole country. And uh, they play a big role in developing new ideas for the range. Now, the question, and of course, the criticism has been, are they really doing enough to diversify the economy? Are they really adding a lot of uh, new activity to the range economy? Uh, Ida Rukavina will be um, a younger voice, um, uh, one of very few women to serve in the role as IRRB commissioner, brings a different perspective. She is, of course, the daughter of uh, the late state representative Tom Rukavina, uh, and the Rukavina family has a storied political history in, in, in northern Minnesota. So it'll be interesting to see what, what she does with this uh, new title in her, in her role here in the Iron Range. <music> Cleveland Cliffs has idled its North Shore mine. It's been idled uh, in the process of being idled almost nine months. And uh, there's really not clear when the North Shore mine, which has a mine in Babbitt, the Babbitt area, and a processing plant in Silver Bay on Lake Superior, when they're going to reopen. They're uh, one of the higher cost uh, mines uh, among the taconite mines in northeastern Minnesota. So the Cleveland Cliffs is, is holding them um, in abeyance for future demand. And that means a lot of workers, uh, more than 400, are laid off. Um, in this process, and they've now hit some of them nine months uh, on unemployment, which means they're they're about to lose their unemployment benefits. Uh, there is a bill in the state legislature to expand or or extend the unemployment benefits, but the political makeup of the de legislature has changed, and the de local delegation. And it'll be, of course, uh, something to see what what the new delegation does in the face of this of this ongoing economic situation. And and that's not the only mine that's kind of on the uh, on the bubble here. Hibbing Taconite has been running near its uh, accessible ore um, expenditure here. It's running near the end of its mine plan. They need more ore, and of course, Lorenzo Gonzalez, uh, CEO of Cleveland Cliffs, which runs Hibbing Taconite, has said that Hibbing's future depends on the ore in Itasca County near the former Butler Taconite 
uh, AKA SR or Masabi Metallics project. And of course, we're all waiting to see if the uh, Minnesota Supreme Court will rule on Masabi Metallics appeal of the state mining leases that were pulled from it when it failed to deliver uh, its financial promises. 